Hi ladies, what's up? Thank you so much for joining me on another video. Today, I really wanted to talk about what it takes to really start living the life of your dreams. This is something that I've been experiencing and doing on my own for a few years now. This video is dedicated um, to any woman, young woman, woman of any age, <laughs> any woman, um, or man, a man to anybody. I don't know why I'm just choosing one demographic. No, anybody that just needs to hear this, whoever, this is meant for you if you just need to hear this. So we've all been there, or some of us will be there at one point of being lost, not knowing what you're meant to do in this world, not knowing your own talents, your God-given gifts. We all have a gift, by the way. We all do, you have a gift. I have a gift, we all have a gift. It just looks different. I can relate to feeling lost and not knowing who you are, where you're going, or what's even the right next step to get to where you feel like you need to be because you feel this is no longer me. I don't identify with either a career, a lifestyle, an environment, my surroundings are just like, this doesn't feel like home to me. It doesn't feel like home, you know? Self-awareness was definitely the first starting point for me, was just becoming aware that I wasn't happy um, in my life. Um, and not to say that I wasn't grateful, because I feel like a lot of people think that when you say that you're not happy, it just means that you're just not being grateful. Um, because people who are, and I can say this from personal experience, people who are also thinking about jumping off a bridge are also very grateful people. So um, those kind of things are separate from my own personal experience. So it's not necessarily about gratitude because you are grateful. It just means that your path is no longer in alignment. And it can happen to a lot of us. Maybe this is something that I'm going to experience again at a different point in my life. Maybe you will too if you found your path once again. And becoming self-aware um, and really looking at my life and realizing that I deserve to be happy, you deserve to be happy, happy with how your individual days play out and happy with the people that you have in your life. You know, we don't deserve to be unhappy. It just means that we're just not on the right path is simply what it means for me. And so becoming self-aware that I just Here's the thing, you really got to know that if you don't enjoy doing something, if you don't enjoy certain people, you don't have to keep them in your life. That It doesn't have to be a part of your life. I think um, ownership and yeah, taking ownership over um, our lives is really important because we're the only ones that are going to be able to change it. So with that also became um, emotional intelligence and listening to my emotions and letting my emotions actually lead the way has been a very huge uh, learning lesson for me because whenever I am, if I accept something um, in my career or in my personal life, if I accept it and it doesn't make me feel good, if instead it makes me feel everything opposite of peace and love and expansion, if instead it just makes me feel okay, this is making me feel depressed, anxious, stressed out. I can't breathe. I feel like this huge rock is over me. The pre oh, no. Life does not have to be like that. And sometimes situations will make you feel like you're the one that is just not in the right, like you're just not being a team player or whatever the case might be. But no, like our emotions are the best indicator of are we following the path that we're meant to follow, even if we don't know. And we're not going to know what's on the other side of that path. I think that's what makes it really exciting for me is that I have no idea how my life is going to play out. I think the next really important thing is following your curiosity. You know, we often hear people say, follow your heart. And I guess heart and curiosity, what is that? I, I'm not sure what the difference is between those two when you say follow your heart. But when you follow what you are curious about, that's going to lead you to somewhere very beautiful. You don't, you won't even know where it's, there's so many women that I look up to, but the kind of women that I'm just really attracted to are women on their own individual path. And this woman actually inspired me. Um, her name is Debbie Brown. And she actually inspired me to pursue meditation because it's something that's always been 
um, on my mind. I always wanted to meditate a little bit more. The people that I look up to always talk about how meditation was just something that really keeps them grounded. It aligned their life. It was like one of the best things that ever happened to them. And so I decided to be like, okay, um, this is something that I'm interested in. It's something that I'm curious about. And so I enrolled in a enrichment program, a meditation enrichment program. And then when I go in, I go a thousand percent in. So I'm like, no, I'm going to become a teacher too. Like that's how I'm thinking about yoga, not a yoga instructor. I'm like, I need to be a yoga teacher. Like I need to know everything about yoga, everything about meditation. And of course, you're never going to know everything. Um, I think that's actually pretty ignorant to say, but I want to just be deep into these things that I am interested in. You know, it's not like a little topical thing that I am just exploring. No, I am going deep within these practices and these things that I am curious about. So curiosity is really your power. And so I've been um, in this meditation program and studying to become a teacher um, since I think September. I I think I had said October, but it's actually September. I look back at my journal. And at first, all I wanted to do was just kind of deepen my practice, learn more about it and all that stuff. And now just um, this morning, I woke up because I'm starting to actually, I have to uh, train 10 hours, like I actually have to teach 10 hours before I get certified. And I'm already at the very end of the program. Um, I'm just deepening my knowledge a lot more so I can be very comfortable um, actually teaching meditation. And so... I discovered, and this is this is what I mean. I didn't know that this is something that I wanted to do, but I knew that I always wanted to follow my heart. And I, I wanted to be of service. Being of service is something that has always been very important to me. And even back in 2015, when I launched my book, The Sweet Life, so I went to Chicago and I told my team at that time that I wanted like as many activations or activities that we can do to give back to the communities in Chicago. I did to like a boys and girls club and I spoke to some little kids and everything. And um, I did my best to make sure that my book tour was also giving back. And it's always been something very important for me is to give back, especially because in this world we take so much. So it's all about balance. So if we take, we also have to replenish mother earth, you know? So that's the whole concept also behind and the mission also with my company sweet soul is that we give back to mother nature because we're also gratefully um, using her resources to be able to produce these tangible healing tools that um, we're going to be producing and so anyways um, so with meditation and here's the thing okay so you don't know what's going to happen and how life is going to unfold and that's the exciting part with meditation throughout these months I finally came to a point actually it just maybe like a month ago I wrote down in my journal that I wanted to um, teach veterans at the VA hospital meditation veterans who struggle with PTSD anxiety or other mental disorders and that's something that hits really close to home to me and I wouldn't have had this kind of desire hadn't I not signed up for and explored my creative my curiosity with meditation and this morning I woke up because I already have to start reaching out to the VA hospital and um, setting up meetings so I can volunteer and this is all volunteer work that I want to do um, and just volunteer my time to teach meditation to our veterans and um, that's like literally my my passion this is what I feel like I get up I like no you don't need to pay me first of all you don't need to pay me I'm fully supported by the universe you don't need to pay me <laughs> um but doesn't mean that I don't deserve to get paid but like I, literally like this is volunteer work that I'm really excited to do and volunteer and um give back to our veterans because um this is a way that I can help and give back and it's really become like my soul's purpose and mission and my passion is to teach our veterans um, about meditation and how to meditate and how to use it to overcome PTSD um, and other mental um, disorders you know so that's what I mean you don't know what's going to come from you pursuing your creativity and your curiosity you know what I mean so always follow that always always follow that what what Hmm. journal about this what really piques my curiosity make a list 
of like the top three things that you really want to start exploring. And this is what's going to shift it to the next level. Now you got to look at your life and all the habits and all the same patterns that you have been repeating over and over because you're not going to get a different life if you keep repeating the same pattern. So you really have to shake up the ground a thousand percent, but you're capable of doing that. You know what I mean? I think sometimes we want to hear a message to be delivered in a way like, no, just baby steps. No, like you are more than capable to make drastic change. Evolution, personal evolution doesn't have to be a small, steady little path, right? You can actually speed up the evolution of yourself. You can speed it up through meditation, through really just being like, you know what? All of these habits that I have in my life, maybe I spend too much time watching television. Maybe I spend too much time on social media or dancing on TikTok. Maybe I spend too much time doing all of these things. Are these things really helping build the future for myself? Like if, of course, if dancing on social media makes you happy, absolutely do it because it's all about happiness. It's all about what you do now. But it's also like, this is more so like if you are in a place where you really got to make drastic changes and you really know that a lot of things are just not for you. You know what I mean? And these are things, this is how I look at myself in the mirror. I, I'm not going to baby myself. Like I'm going to give myself the hard truth and stare at myself in the mirror and really look at my life and change, change what I don't like. If I don't like a certain outcome in a business, I can change that. I don't have to keep putting up with the same thing over and over again. There's no, like there's no reason to do that anymore. If I don't like the way that my maybe um, my self-esteem or my body, like whatever, like if I don't like something about me, I also have the power to change it instead of like complaining about it, you know? So that was really powerful for me is it always just, it does just goes back to like ownership really. And here's the thing. Um, there is really no other perfect time to make the change than like literally right the second. And this was another big thing for me because um, I, I feel like I used to wait for the perfect moment where life would just naturally evolve me into something that I wanted to be. Like, oh, life is just going to take me there. Like maybe like when I'm 40, I'll finally be at this place where, you know, I'm a vegan. So really quickly, we're going to close it up because we've been on here for quite some time. But this is also really important is embodying the energy of that character, that role, that persona, even that you really want to become. You know, if you want to become a confident person, you got to start, stop sitting like this or being timid or being like, no. If you want to be confident, one of the very simple things that you can do is start with your posture. Start with standing tall with your head held high in confidence, in public, around people where you might feel like you just want to go like this. This is where you exercise that moment and you embody that energy of like, I am enough as I am. I don't need to shrivel down or become less for anybody or anything. And start standing up like that. You know, make a wider stance. Don't cross, cross your arms. Change your body language. Start doing little things like that to really embody the energy. For me, it was embodying... Um, like I'm a Leo, Virgo cusp, Cancer moon. And <laughs> um, I feel like I lived in the shadow side of my uh, zodiac sign, the Leo sign for a long time. And I'm like now fully coming into what it means to be a queen. You know, we're all queens, but lions, Leos, especially we have like, that's our energy is like queen energy, right? The sun, we shine, we're bright. So it just gives you that more level of confidence. Like I stand in my own truth and who I am. I love who I am. I love who I embody. This is me. This is me. I have power over my life. Creating the life of your dreams really does go beyond just what you experience on your everyday life, like your environment. But it really, it really, I should have started with this one actually, because it really starts with embodying the energy of who you want to become, more of yourself, actually. We're not thinking about like, oh, I want to be like her. No, we're not comparing our lives to anyone. It's more about like really embodying your true self, like who you really are, who you really are. And so if there's a character trait that you want to embody more, you got to look for opportunities to be that. If you want to be more generous, 
look for an opportunity to be more generous or more kind. If these things are something that you really look at yourself hard in the mirror and you realize that you don't really embody the, per the qualities of a generous person or a kind person, for example, but you really do want to be that more. If you want to become a meditation teacher, and I'm just using this as an example because it's off the top of my head, well, what does a meditation teacher do? Of course, it's going to look a lot different for everybody, but it really is a very great place to kind of start and begin to shift things in your life um, to really embody that kind of role. Because at the end of the day, these are all just roles. This is not who we really are. You know, I don't believe like we're not our money. We're not our status. We're not like our follower account. We're not our body. We're not our thoughts. We're not our mind. We are the, the spiritual being that is experiencing all of this. So that just kind of takes off a lot of pressure because at the end of the day, this is just a role. You know, I'm just playing the role of a meditation teacher. I'm just playing a role of a content creator. I am playing the role of a mom, of a sister, of a wife. It really is just a role. It's not who we are. That's not our identity. So it takes pressure off, um, but it also helps you understand that you have to look at yourself hardcore in the mirror and be very honest with yourself and look at your habits Look at the people in your life. That's a really huge thing also because sometimes we keep people in our lives because they make us feel safe, but they really are just a huge roadblock in our lives. And I've had a really great experience just recently when I um, kind of separated myself from a personal uh, energy that never felt good to me. I never really felt connected to this energy. It just never felt authentic. And the moment that I said, I don't need to accept this kind of energy in my life. It doesn't make me feel good. The moment that happened, the blessings, like the doors just kind of like flew wide open and blessings just started pouring down. And so much so, so much so that I started to trip out because I'm like, oh my God, it's so true. Like you don't realize how many roadblocks we allow to keep in our lives because of safety or because sometimes people manipulate us or we let people manipulate us because no one's going to manipulate us unless we allow it. But sometimes people want to manipulate you and you believe them. No, we, we, we don't do that kind of stuff anymore. We have to be so aware of everything in our lives, every action, every thought that we're having, every word. The whole intention behind this video was to give you some guidance um, that you can potentially use on your path as you start to create the beautiful path and dream life that you deserve to live. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to subscribe and like this video. And like always, please make sure you leave a comment down below so I can hear what you guys have to say. So anyways, have a blessed and beautiful day and I hope to see you guys on my next video.